What's up guys, my name is Brandon and I've been using iOS 13 beta 3 this whole week and I wanted to give you guys an updated review on my experience with the software. So if you guys watched my original beta 3 video, you would have seen that I had a lot of issues with my 10R in that video. So my iPhone 10R was super laggy, the touch responsiveness was just not there all the way and it was just really bad. It was a really bad experience and you guys got to see my original reaction to it on camera because it hadn't happened before I started making that video. So anyways, the thing I discovered after using, you know, five or six different devices on iOS 13 beta 3, I discovered that this touch response issue and the lag has only been occurring on Face ID devices. So like the iPhone 10 and above. I'm not sure what it is, but I have not had any issues at all with my iPhone 6S right here or the iPhone 8. But on the other hand, I've had issues with the iPhone 10R and the iPhone 10 and a lot of other people have also had issues, which I'm going to talk about later on in this video. But before we get into the performance, before I let you guys know my updated experience with the performance on iOS 13 beta 3. I wanted to talk about some more of the new changes and features and some of the bugs and things like that in iOS 13 beta 3. So it's always fun to continue using beta software after its original release date because you continue to find more features and changes, just small things and just things you didn't think to look for. So I have found some more new features and changes here in iOS 13 beta 3. And the first one is actually a really cool new feature. Now I'm not sure if this is exclusive in iOS 13 beta 3 or beta 2. I know it wasn't in beta 1, but it's that the volume HUD actually disappears when you take a screenshot. Take a look at that. I'm gonna do it one more time right here so we're going to press up on the volume and then we're going to take a screenshot you can see just before it takes the screenshot it disappears the volume hud disappears so that it doesn't obstruct the screenshot that you're taking and i love this feature because i've had that multiple times in ios 12 where i would take a screenshot and the volume hud would be in there when i didn't want it to be or i'd have to sit there and wait for the volume hud to disappear before i took a screenshot you can see in ios 13 that's solved and I think that's a really awesome feature here. Now, if you did want to get the volume HUD to actually show up in a screenshot for whatever reason, you can just go ahead and screen record and then take a screenshot of the screen recording. But for most people, I would imagine you would not want the volume HUD being in your screenshots. So now in iOS 13 beta three, we have some really cool options when we go ahead and 3D touch or long press on a tab inside of Safari. You can see we get these options right here. We can arrange tabs by title, arrange tabs by website. We can close other tabs, which is a really cool feature there. That's something you see in like Google Chrome on your desktop and we also have copy right there and you can also see it shows the little tab right there so I like this added feature here in Safari Safari definitely got a really nice improvement a lot of new enhancements to make Safari much better in iOS 13 now if we go into our settings and go to our iCloud you will notice how subscriptions is now up in the top right here that did get moved up just a little bit here in those iCloud settings and there are a ton of other small UI enhancements throughout iOS 13 beta 3 but they're just really small things like if we go ahead and 3d touch on the volume right here you'll see that the iPhone logo or if you're using AirPods it'll be AirPods right there or Beats whatever it is you will see the icon there it's actually a little bit smaller and more refined here in iOS 13 beta 3 it's pretty big in beta Beta 2 is kind of you know look too big on the screen there so they did refine that a little bit here in beta 3 and like I said there's a lot of small things like that throughout iOS 13 beta 3 I'm not going to show all of them because there are a ton there's probably like 40 or 50 total but those are just some of these small UI enhancements that you can notice in these beta softwares and it's going to continue being that way as well until the final release of iOS 13. So now I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the bugs I've been experiencing here in iOS 13 beta 3 and there have been quite a few a little bit more than beta 2 actually which is kind of disappointing because it seems like we're moving backwards in terms of stability and the bugs. So the first thing I want to talk about is the camera application. Now this is going to be exclusive to the iPhone 10R, 10S and 10S Max. And when you go to portrait flip it over to selfie you can see already it's very laggy when you go to portrait here in iOS 13 beta 3 it was not like that in beta 2 but take a look at that and sometimes when you scroll through these it'll just lock up and you won't even be able to move you know anything it's just gonna be completely unresponsive and just portrait in general I mean look how slow that is here on iOS 13 beta 3 and we're talking about a brand new iPhone here the iPhone 10R with Apple's you know strongest chipset in it look at that just very laggy and this is just constant and you can see it's a black screen right now it's not even showing 
what the image is going to be taking. So I actually only use the iPhone 10R as my daily driver here on iOS 13 beta three for one day. That's all I can make it through because things like this in the photos application, the camera application is just super annoying, especially when I personally just use a lot or take a lot of portrait photos. Now that's not the only thing. Sometimes I could also not unlock my device. Like when I swiped up right here for face ID, it just wouldn't swipe for some reason. I would keep swiping and nothing would happen until I locked the phone and unlocked it again and then swiped up. I had that happen multiple times times, especially when I was using it as my daily driver. The YouTube application is also very buggy here in iOS 13 beta three. And I originally thought that this was just going to be because of the YouTube application itself, but that's not the case because on beta two, it was not as bad as it is in beta three. So sometimes when you go ahead and load up a video and then when you go to minimize it, it will just freeze. Like it will just freeze before it even gets to the bottom. It will just stay right there and the video will stop playing. So I've had that happen a couple of times and just overall, the YouTube application is not very stable here in iOS. 13 beta 3 it wasn't great on beta 2 either but it's made even worse in beta 3. now i did also want to talk about 3d touch so i'm going to bring up my iphone 6s here so if you guys missed my iphone 6s ios 13 video check that out up in the cards and down in the description below but anyways 3D touch is not fully back in iOS 13 beta three. I mentioned in my original video that it was like partially back and that is actually true. So one place that I noticed that it's fully back to normal is in the platter right here in the control center. If we go in 3D touch right here where these icons are, you know, for airplane mode, airdrop and things like that, that feels like it's completely using 3D touch and not a haptic touch or a long press, but pretty much everywhere else throughout the OS, it feels like we still have a mixture of 3D touch and haptic touch and it's really annoying. I notice it inside of the messages application on the home screen, inside of websites, things like that. It just doesn't feel like it's fully using 3D touch again. And we've talked about this before on the channel plenty of times. I don't know when Apple's gonna fully fix this so that 3D touch actually feels like 3D touch on these pressure sensitive screens but it is getting really annoying. And apparently by the time iOS 13 gets released, it will be back to normal. But you guys know I will keep you updated on that. I just want to let you know that it's not fully back in iOS 13 just yet. Now, one of the cool new features added in iOS 13 beta three is the FaceTime attention correction. And this basically, like I predicted in the video, in my original beta three video, it's exactly what I predicted. Basically, Apple is using machine learning to make it look like you're looking at the camera when you're actually looking at your screen. Because you guys know when you're looking at FaceTime, when you're on FaceTime with somebody, you're going to be looking at the screen so you could see the other person instead of looking straight into the camera. That'd be weird if you just look straight into the camera the whole time but now apple has a way somehow through machine learning and ai i'm sure they just have a way so that it looks like you're looking at the camera when you're actually looking at the screen so i haven't actually tested this out myself personally but i have seen some examples over on twitter those are up on the screen right now some really cool results that Apple is able to produce with this software feature called attention correction. So now let's move on to the performance of iOS 13 beta three. How has it been for me the remainder of this week? I told you guys in my original video how bad it was. I mentioned at the beginning of this video how bad it was, but how has it been overall since that first day? And I will tell you that it didn't really improve much at all. And like I said, this isn't just me. I've looked at forums. I've seen my replies on the comments, you know, on my social media, everything. And it seems that Face ID devices are really affected negatively with iOS 13 beta three. For some reason, all devices below the iPhone 10 are not really having any kind of lag issues on iOS 13 beta three, but it is just some of the face ID devices. And I say some of the face ID devices because not everybody on iOS 13 beta three is experiencing issues, but the people that are, it just seems like the majority are face ID enabled devices. And I would have to say that this is the worst beta so far of iOS 13 in terms of performance. Like I mentioned, I mentioned a lot of things earlier already about the camera application, how I couldn't swipe up and things like that. That was pretty much all I have to talk about. You know, the lag and unresponsiveness also happens on the home screen a lot. I'll just be you know doing something as simple as just scrolling through like you just saw it right there once again just even scrolling through the screens like this you'll sometimes there it goes again see some lag and just some unresponsiveness to the touch which is really really annoying and it makes it really hard to use on a daily basis when you have things like that happening and that's the big reason that i was only able to use this for one day as my daily driver i could not stand to use it anymore as my daily driver because of these issues now one thing that i didn't show you guys is that zooming in on photos is also really bad here in ios 13 beta 3 take a look at that look how look at the unresponsiveness to my touch and the lag you guys can see that it's crazy. I did not notice this in beta two or beta one. I did try it and I did not have any lag, but for some reason in beta three, you know, the camera application is laggy, zooming in on photos is laggy and just the responsiveness is just not there completely. I'm not sure what's causing this because there weren't really too many major features that would impact 
performance like that. So I hope it is fixed in beta four, but as of right now, performance on beta three is just not good. Now, when it comes to the battery life, battery life is the exact same as beta two. I did not notice any difference from beta two. I'm getting around seven hours of usage with about 20% battery remaining at the end of the day. And of course, if you use a lot of applications that are not updated for iOS 13, those are also gonna drain battery because they're just not optimized for the software. So that's another thing to take into consideration if you're planning on using iOS 13 on your daily driver. Now I say drain, but it's really not too bad. Even if you are using applications like that, honestly, the battery life on iOS 13 is pretty solid overall. So anyways, that leads me to the conclusion of this video. Should you install iOS 13 beta three? And I would say, honestly, if you have not already updated to iOS 13 beta three, I would just skip beta three and just go straight to beta four because beta three is kind of a nightmare in terms of performance, especially if you have a 2017 or 2018 iPhone with face ID. I personally thought that things would get better in terms of performance after like the first day of using iOS 13 or after a reboot or something like that. But of course I was extremely disappointed when I found out that the performance is still bad after a reboot and after using the software for a few days. Now iOS 13 public beta two should be out pretty soon. There is a possibility that Apple just skips it completely and that could have something to do with the iPhone 7 issues as well. So if you had the iPhone 7 or the 7 Plus, you guys didn't even get iOS 13 beta 3. So there is a chance that public beta 2 gets pushed back. And there's also a chance that public beta 2 is different from developer beta 3. So I will keep you guys updated. You may want to just go ahead and get on the public beta train if you are having issues. Uh, but I will update you guys on everything very, very soon once public beta two does get released. So if you guys have any questions or you want to share your experience with iOS 13 beta three, make sure to leave a comment down below. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And of course, make sure you guys do subscribe so you don't miss my public beta two video, my beta four video. I have a lot of other iOS videos coming up as well on iOS 13. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you soon.